know you have guests here. Yeah. And we do want to go before the Lord in prayer before we leave. Yeah. Amen. But uh, uh, how can we, we need to emphasize, amen, the importance of prayer. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Uh, I've been reading a, a book lately called The Ten Greatest Revival. The World of Ten Greatest Revival. Amen. Beginning, amen, from what is known as the Great Awakening. And I, I came across, oh, so much emphasis and the reminder of the importance of prayer. And I have studied revival over the last number of years. And I'm familiar with what is known as the Welsh Revival, yeah. 1894. And then there is the Irish revival in Ulster. Yeah. And many of us apostolic uh, churches are familiar with what is known as the Azusa Street yeah. revival. Yeah. Because yeah. from the Azusa Street, many apostolic church, amen, elders and founding fathers were, were baptized with the Holy Ghost, nice. amen, and ever speaking in tongues in Azusa Street. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I was reading these books, this book on these revivals. And um, what I was reading about the Great Awakening, one sentence, the Jamaican Revival. And I thought the Jamaican Revival, I've never heard of Jamaican Revival. I know Jamaicans love worship, I know they love prayer. And I, I know they love demonstrative worship. And I know that, that we, we see the manifestation and the power of God. But the Jamaican Revival, I've never heard about. So I had to get the book in its entirety. I'd only downloaded a couple of chapters. But I've since got the book. It came uh, just um, uh, last week. But I did a research upon the Jamaican revival. What had happened? One of the greatest revivals was known as the Great Awakening. And with the Great Awakening in 1857, 1858, it, it is said all right, it was, that revival is referred to as the prayer meeting revival. And it's because all right, uh, churches and, and the communities would hold these midday prayer meetings in America. And it was said that through those prayer meetings, people became aware of their sin and they turned to God. Amen. And as over a million souls in America were converted, it is said that the, the, the Great Awakening, this proceeded the Welsh, the Irish Revival. It, it proceeded Azusa Street. It is said that it went across the Atlantic and it came to England. And in England, it is said in the UK, another million, over another million, amen, souls were converted to Christ. And it is said that in the Britain, uh, Jamaica being one of the colonies, and I, and I, and I have, um, uh, you know, I've been I share this, and I'm sure some of you would, would do the research. But it is said that the Jamaicans heard about the, the Great Awakening Revival. Yes. And they started to pray. Paul, oh, that God would bring yeah. that revival to yeah. their shores. And it was said that in 1860, and if you don't mind, I, I want to just read it as it happened. Amen. You know, because I've been inspired and amazed by what God has done with Jamaicans throughout the world Amen. when it comes to the apostolic message. And... Um, what was unique is that the Irish revival was just, the, the population, just two million. The Welsh revival, less than a million. And Jamaica, a population of uh, back then, less than two million. That God seems to breathe upon the, the, the minority. Yes. What seemed to be small and insignificant. And he does great and wonderful things. It is said here that on Friday, 28th of September, 1860, a typical meeting commenced here at 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. It says, one verse of a hymn was sung and an opening prayer was offered. He said, there was no need to call on anyone to pray because as soon as one person finished, another began. All right. I've heard of that this brother had some prayer meeting. I don't know what they were like. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But prayer meeting that a spirit led. Yes. 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 It says that even the little children took part in the intercession. When one little boy began to pour out his soul before the Lord, I quote, trembling seized upon the comfort. 
It says that tears were shed and cries for mercies were heard, but groaning and torn from the hearts of harvesters. One little girl, little girl, lift up her voice in prayer, in earnest fervency. And here's another thing that was noted from the Jamaican revival. There is this fluency, this oratory, amen, when it comes to prayer. And I, we still have that today. You know, I, they pray when they Jamaican pray over the offering. It, it, it's a sermon in, in itself. And it said that when this little girl prayed like that, it said then the spirit came like a rushing mighty wind. I'm talking about 1860 in Jamaica. The spirit came like a rushing mighty wind. And this was written in the, in the diary of the German missionary. He said, strong men, macho men, trembled upon their knees. Could you imagine? They meant men on their knees, not stand, but on their knees they are trembling and they are swaying as, as if an hurricane had entered the building where they were praying. They meant as if they said as if they were shaken by some invisible power. Weeping was so general and insistent. Amen. The meeting ended at 12 midnight. And the missionary went home. But the brethren, they get it in someone else's home. And guess what? They continue praying. Oh, the Jamaican revival. I think I kind of understand now why Jamaicans behave the way they do. But oh, I tell you, I pray God Almighty. I believe that God is about to send a revival. Amen. Such as we have never, ever seen before. I thank God for the highest revival. I thank God for the worst revival. I thank for the Jamaican revival. And I'm beginning to believe that if God's going to just mix it all up. He's going to mix it all up. Watch out. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for that revival. The revival that affects the family. Oh, thank God. A revival that affects the man. In fact, I, I'm going to share a little bit with you a little bit about my ignorance. But, uh, you know, I've traveled on the coast of Africa, and um, we have some Africans in our church. But when I went to Ivory Coast, the minute you, you just say the opening prayer, amen, and the music stop, they run up to the front. I'm not exact. They run. I'm not exaggerating. They run to the front to get their place. And man, are oh, you from Africa? You understand what I mean? And man, they start. And, oh my goodness me. You talk about dance. I tell you what I see. And you know what? I see every movement going. My background make me question the movements. I was in shock. Yeah. But oh, when I saw the spirit move, yeah. when I saw people being slain by the Holy Ghost, yeah. when I saw demons leaving individuals screaming, yeah. I knew God was in control. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I, I just share that to say this. Hallelujah. A couple months ago, like, I mean, it was last year sometime, there, there, there was a, a black looking brother, excuse the expression. But there was a black looking uh, a black brother on the front row of guests. And man, he was just watching me. He was jumping up and down, man, making a commotion. I mean, we worship boisterous, but he makes us look simple. All as right. if we were sleeping. Yes, yes. And the next minute, you, you know, we're singing a worship song. Bow down and worship. Yes, yes. He goes to the front and he the Lord. And in my mind, I said, yeah, man, he must be from yeah. Africa. Yeah. <laughs> so after church, I greeted him, God bless where you're from, Jamaica. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Oh, God, send him with five once again. God bless your family. God, revive us once again. Revive the family. Amen. Revive our man. It is sad. It was sad. I had another paragraph. So 
the people would not leave the chapel. Missionary oh. was notifying and aced them back on Wednesday even to witness unforgettable scenes. He said in one situation as many as 100 hardened sinners were prostrate at once. They were all slain. My goodness me. At once. And listen, and I'm quoting. Because in this day of political correctiveness, I would be quoted as being out of order. But this is 1860. He said there was a dozen couple living in sin. They published the bans for legal marriage you know, and got married. Oh That's what revival does for you. Yes. Hey Amen. Yes. You will become a new person in Christ. Oh but some reading about this, this revival, this revival. Hey Amen. Oh, the, the prayer meeting revival. What was also significant about the Jamaican revival? It was said that the Jamaicans, they could not pray in the same way as those in America and in the UK because they had the, what they call the midday prayer meetings. But it was said that they, they worked very early in the morning. Yes. And on the plantation I read, and worked till very late. So guess what, they had early morning prayer early morning. meetings. Yeah. And then they had late night prayer meetings. Oh, the power of prayer. So when I'm talking about spiritual warfare, yeah. I want to remind you, amen, of just how important it is for us to raise up our family. Oh, there must be an altar. Yes. There must be an altar. There must be an altar of prayer. Amen. The text that I read to you, David Long said, Oh, that one would give me drink. My Lord. Oh, from the waters of the well of Bethlehem. Doesn't matter where you travel, my friend. There's only one place where you will find living waters. Amen. Jesus said that that at the last day of three, if anyone thirsty said, let them come unto me. Yes. Out of their bed it shall flow rivers of living water. David realized there was a source where that pure, sweet water came from. And I want you to know that the sweet, pure water of life, it comes from none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. There is a Bethlehem here yes. in this church. There is a Bethlehem yes. here today. He said, oh, that I would drink of it. And with these three mighty men my God. heard. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh. They just overheard. Yes. And they said, come, let's go get them. Oh, my God. Let's call a committee meeting. Let's see, if we, let's see if we can raise a budget for this project. My God. Oh, no. Let's go and get it done. I'm giving you a definition of mighty men. And uh, we read that, that they, they had to better, but they had to break through the garrison of the, 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 the Palestinians. And David later acknowledged the risk that was involved in that. Yes, yes. He said they risked their own life for it. So much so that when they brought it to David, their king, David said, this is too valuable. This is too precious. Yes. So it says, here's what I do. Yes. I, I, I'm going to pour the out as an offering, as a, as a worship unto yes. um, the Lord. Yes. These things did these three mighty men. David, mighty men. We are told in scripture. One was named Adino. Another one was Eliza. And another one was Shani. Yes. Note their names. The Dino, the Esna, Elisa, the Ahohite, Shama, the Harite. Second Samuel chapter 2 and verse 2 Samuel.